Hello and welcome to our Mementos, uh, your uh, one-stop channel for all things RC and craft related. Uh, today we're going to be looking at part two on the T-Beacon series. And, uh, excuse me while I clean up a bit of this mess here. Um, I've got a lot of things going on because this is actually the busy flying season. Um, so, but anyway, enough with that uh, whining about stuff. So today we're going to be talking about uh, part two on the T-Beacon series. As you've seen from um, part one, uh, this is a great little product. Uh, it's for finding lot for finding anything that gets lost. Uh, but we're going to be using it for finding lost planes and quads. And uh, for those of you that have seen the other videos, uh, looking at the locator series, uh, the locator is great, limited range. This has a, a lot longer range, and uh, you can access the actual GPS coordinates. Uh, and we'll be looking at that in one of the future videos, so it'll actually tell you ex very close to where it is. And it also has a nice beeper and a flasher as you get close and you activate it with the, with the walkie-talkie. It'll actually start uh, beeping and flashing, so uh, you'll be able to find it. But today we're going to be talking about connecting it to our um, PC so that we can change our frequencies. Uh, as you know, uh, there are certain frequencies that are allowed depending on your region of the country, region of the world, and you should go check to see what those um, to see what those frequencies are. In North America, we have an FRS, which is Family Radio Services, uh, which are um, 14 channels, but eight of them <coughs> eight of them exclusive uh, for FRS, um, and uh, so we need to. Uh, when we get the T-Beacon, it's actually pre-programmed to a ham channel, which unless you have a ham license, uh, I think that uh, in order to avoid conflict or getting in trouble, uh, we want to make sure that we move it down to a frequency that's open. Now the FRS channels are kind of nice is that uh, there's no license required, and it's just uh, the rules are is be courteous. So uh, today we're going to be using the USB UART, and then we're going to uh, activate the software. We're going to talk in detail the sequence that you need to follow through. I don't want you to get frustrated because I've kind of done a lot of that already. And uh, we're going to talk about how to connect this to the PC so that you get a connection the first time. I'm only going to be changing the frequencies, writing it back to the T-Beacon and, and getting out. Uh, 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 there's a lot of other features in there that you can change, but for me the defaults are all good. and um, I'm going to be learning more as I move along as well. But first, let's talk about uh, connecting uh, the uh, T-Beacon uh, to this uh, USB UART, which there'll be a link to uh, so that you can purchase one of these. This cost me a big $1.30 uh, off eBay. Um, I put some shrink wrap on it so that um, you're not fingering the board too much. Uh, you could cause some shorts. Uh, so basically, uh, there's only four wires to connect. The blue wire uh, you can ignore for this process. Uh, that's for the um, external battery, which uh, we'll talk about in a future video. Right now, you want you are concerned with the black and red. That's going to be your ground. The black is the ground. The red is your 5 volt. Okay. The green goes to the TX. Now, on the T beacon, the green is the RX. And you're always going to be connecting your RX to your TX. So this is the RX coming off the uh, T beacon going to the TX uh, on the USB UART. And therefore, the TX on the T beacon, which is yellow wire, is going to be going to the RX on the USB UART. And uh, when we plug it into the computer, that's the configuration you need. Be careful. I, you, it's there is some potential for causing damage if you uh, miswire it, so uh, uh, be careful, and that's why I uh, put this little video together. Follow the instructions. It's black, red, green, and yellow. Assuming that the colors of the cables haven't changed, it is ground, 5 volt, TX, and RX, okay? Transmit and receive. So those are the uh, connections uh, that you're going to need. And this is the cable that came with the T-Beacon, and we're going to plug this in. Now, before you do anything, even before you even look, download the software from their website, you want to plug in the T-Beacon, plug the USB UART into your PC, 
to load any drivers so that it will recognize this device and it will give you a COM port. If you're not getting a COM port, because the, the whole purpose of this is to create a serial connection, um, if you're not getting a COM port, you haven't done something right. Solve that problem first rather than going up there and plugging this into your PC 30 times trying to get a connection. If you're not getting a COM port after you plug this in, uh, you're not doing it right. Uh, the other thing is, is once you've now plugged this in and installed the drivers, go to the website and download the software uh, because that's what you're going to need to change the T-Beacon um, uh, for us changing the frequencies on the T-Beacon. So that's it for now. Let's take a close look at the, uh, uh, the software and how to use it. Okay. Um, our T-Beacon connected to our uh, USB UART. Um, we're now ready to uh, work with the software. Now the first thing you have to do is go to the T-Beacon website and download the appropriate uh, software. Now uh, the version I'm using is T-Beacon 054. Uh, there's a new version um, and I downloaded that first and it didn't work. Uh, but it'll give you a message with the actual T-Beacon firmware. I could update the uh, uh, T-Beacon firmware, but I didn't didn't need to do it. The software was there, and I just want to change the basic frequency. So if you do get an error, it will tell you the actual firmware that's installed. You can actually go and download the right uh, version uh, that you need of the software, and then update uh, your firmware if you wish. I'm quite happy happy with this, so I didn't bother. So. Uh, but once you get your software uh, installed, uh, you need to connect your USB UART with the T-Beacon connected, uh, and you need to insert that into the uh, laptop before you even start the software so that you download uh, any drivers that you need uh, to make this all work. So you can notice on mine, I've already done that, and I have um, the drivers, and it uh, reads as COM11. So I'm ready to connect. But there is a sequence you need to follow uh, in order to uh, connect your T-Beacon up. So once your driver is on and your software is installed, uh, and you may need to close everything down and start everything up again so that it's all refreshed. You need to uh, plug your uh, USB UART into your laptop, but do not plug uh, the T-Beacon into the US USB UART. I just keep the small white plug unplugged. As soon as we say connect, okay, then what we're going to do is plug in the USB UAR, uh, the T beacon into the unit, and it's going to say, uh, you notice on the bottom, switching to config mode, and it says done. Now I've loaded up, uh, it's now read my T beacon and all the configuration that's there. So there's lots of uh, items on here to change. Uh, I don't, I'm, I'm quite happy with the defaults here. I mean, you can read more about it. Uh, but for now, I'm just leaving the defaults. But I want to change the frequencies uh, to the FRS, which is the Family Related Services or uh, Family Services. Those are the uh, channels 8 to channel 14 are channels that are exclusive for FRS. They're open and available to anybody. There's no license required. They just say that you should be courteous when you use these channels. So I'm going to pick channel 8, which is the uh, 467-5625. And I'm simply going to write the configuration to the disk. It writes the configuration. And it's uh, your little lights will be lighting on your USB. And it is successfully written. That's all we need to discuss in this part of the software. Uh, it is, we've now changed the frequency, and we're now going to go back and start talking about making the connection with our walkie-talkie. So that's it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on changing the frequencies on the T-Beacon, which for North America, that's, that's a pretty important process. So uh, please go out and, and uh, have fun uh, with, this, with this system. Um, uh, the one tip I did learn uh, from the manufacturer he mentioned to me that when you do your scanning, and I'll do that again um, in a future video, when you hold it close to yourself, in fact, let's turn it on. Let's turn this on.
that's my voltage wait for a second now what we're going to do now is he recommended that when you when you when you press the press the talk as in video one and then press the a b for five or six seconds release this says nine eight and now it starts activating the beeper the recommendation from the manufacturer is is that you actually keep turning around until you get the lowest number and then move in the opposite direction because the lower number will give you will break down your uh, direction a bit finer than the larger number so a little correction from the first video you may want to be rotating around and then going to the number that is the lowest and then going in the opposite direction um, uh, the manufacturer uh, stated that that would give you um, a more accurate your spread will be a lot less if you go to the lowest number rather than the highest number anyway that's it for now if you like this video please say like and if you want to see more please subscribe to my channel and as always have a great day see you next time at emerald meadows